This week on Maker Update, 20 seconds of Spotify from your soap dispenser, MIT's $100 open source ventilator, safe tools for kids, and the Hackaday calendar of virtual events. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Maker Update. I hope you're hanging in there and doing all right and being kind to yourself. For me, that's meant less actual making, less productivity, and more binge watching TV and deep breathing. Uh, but for you, maybe making and keeping your hands busy is helping keep your mind off of things. Whatever it is, I hope it's working for you. And I hope that this episode brightens your day just a little bit. Let's get started with the project of the week. Designed by the Pittsburgh-based design group Deep Local, Scrubber is a Raspberry Pi-based addition to any soap pump that will play 20 seconds of Spotify every time you wash your hands. The system uses a $10 Pi Zero W connected to a $13 Adafruit speaker bonnet you can power it from a battery pack or a power adapter, depending on your situation. For the software, the first step is to create a personal non-commercial app through the Spotify developer dashboard. That will generate the ID and secret code that you'll need to plug into your Pi code. For the Pi, the deep local GitHub instructions walk you through the process, telling you exactly what command line commands to copy and paste in. So it's an approachable build, even if you're relatively new to Raspberry Pi. Mechanically, you'll need to get a little creative to adapt the design for your particular soap dispenser. Somehow, you need to get the Pi's pin 5 to momentarily connect to the ground pin, which triggers the 20 seconds of music. One method they show is to use copper tape, but you could also just use a momentary switch that you manually press for a little musical accompaniment. It's a great project for these times, but it's also a great recipe to reuse for other projects. Maybe a musical shower timer for drought season or a musical workout timer. You can take this one a few different ways. Now for some news. The nonprofit design team, Design That Matters, posted an updated and altered version of the Prusa Medical Shield. The design has undergone clinical testing and approval from the National Institutes of Health and can be downloaded using the link in the description. One of the more unique features is a splatter guard above the shield for increased protection. The shield uses a letter size transparency punched with a standard three hole punch. Now, there are a lot of competing design solutions for face shields right now, and it's pretty inspiring to see how quickly the revisions can be turned around and tested. Chances are, by the time you see this, there will already be a new favorite. But while face protection is a high priority for our healthcare workers, those infected with COVID-19 are still in need of ventilators and specialized ventilator masks, which is a much more complex design challenge. One maker organization tackling the mask problem is the Italian 3D printing company Isanova. They found a snorkeling equipment manufacturer called Decathlon willing to share the CAD drawings of their mask since medical ventilator manufacturers were bound by regulations. They then designed a new valve for the mask allowing it to connect up to traditional ventilator equipment and while the mask isn't medically certified it gives hospitals an emergency option if CPAP masks are in short supply. You can find a link to the design down in the description. As for open source ventilator hardware, MIT has publicly released a design that can be made for $100. The device fits around a medical grade Ambu bag, which are designed to be squeezed by hand. The Arduino based MIT device automates the squeezing. I've seen a number of similar designs and approaches to the same idea, but what makes this one extra robust is that the code and the system have been designed to be fault tolerant and the components have been selected to provide millions of cycles without failure. You can find a link to the plans and the bill of materials using the MIT link in the description, though you'll need to register for a free account in order to see everything. Now for more projects. Speaking of snorkel hacks, Robert Werner, whose snorkel projects I've featured on the show before, created a new instructable of this 3D printed valve design. It's a one-way valve that uses a flap, preventing the recirculation of exhaled air. Robert's design is made for ventilators and can be easily sized up and down in Fusion 360 for different tube diameters. The only thing you can't 3D print is the silicone flap. However, Robert includes a 3D printed template to make it easy to cut the precise shape you need from silicone sheeting. I also like that Robert added these little arrows on the outside ring indicating the direction air can travel. Again, it's not a medical grade component, but it's nice to know that it's available in a pinch. This next one, maybe it's too soon, maybe it's insensitive, or maybe it's exactly what you need for a little laugh in these weird times. On Instructables, Natasha shows how to create these googly-eyed virus pom-poms. Aside from being a quick and crafty project, Natasha says that turning her fears into cute puppets was both therapeutic and fun. 
Now for some tips and tools. On the Cool Tools channel, Shawn Michael Reagan shows how Easy Tack Krylon Spray changed his process for stenciling designs onto raw material. It's a low tack spray adhesive that you can use to turn any paper design into a stencil that can be repositioned more easily than label paper. Hackaday has shared a calendar of virtual events, including online talks and meetups, classes and show and tells. If you're looking for a way to connect to the maker community and maybe learn a thing or two while you shelter in place, check out the calendar to see if there's anything coming up that might interest you. On his YouTube channel, Jude Pullen goes over some of the best, safest tools for children. If you've got a kid at home who's eager to cut and drill and glue things together, Jude has some great suggestions here. Finally, maybe it's just me, but the more time I spend at home, the more I see all the little imperfections, the squeaky hinges, the cabinets that don't stay closed, the crooked paint lines. In her latest video, Leah from CJ Drill shows how to fix a bad wood joint by making your own filler paste. Her channel is full of great approachable home repair guides. Definitely give it a look. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, I just want to let everyone know that because of DigiKey's status as a critical sector business for manufacturing, healthcare, defense, and IT, they are open for business and available to ship your orders. If you have a part that you'd normally get directly from a manufacturer, but they're shut down or delayed, chances are you can get that part from DigiKey with same day shipping. There's also a link in the description where you can learn more about what's going on. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. Let me know what you're doing to stay chill during these crazy times. That seems to be my major problem. Big thanks to my patrons on Patreon and to DigiKey Electronics for making this show possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.